This is Susan Matson, one of the master gardeners who is here today. Bonnie Swenson is another master gardener, and we're here this afternoon at the Damhoff Farm south of Wilmer. This is the Damhoffs here, and they have something called what I call a hoop garden, but they also have different names for it. But it's an enclosed garden where you can begin your uh, plants and, and typically small plant uh, growth early in the season. So the heat in here is um, enough to start most of the crops. I'm going to turn this over to Bonnie to at least, um, or, and actually what we want to talk a little bit about too first is how this got started because it is on a dairy farm and so it's a, a beautiful space with some nice breezes coming through. But I'm going to turn this um, over to the dam house and they can tell a little bit how they got going with this. This is my seventh year with uh, the greenhouse here. Uh, it was a project through um, SCS. Uh, they helped me finance it. And uh, the building happens to be uh, 40 by 100. And uh, it's pretty well built. It's out of two and a half inch tubing. But it got to be a bigger project than we ever imagined uh, when we started putting it up. And uh, we just put it right in the lawn and then tilled up the inside. So the, the whole garden is all natural lawn at one time. And uh, usually we'll like to start um, in the spring about uh, the end of March. Uh, Bonnie likes to start just a week or two weeks later and she has a lot better weed control than what uh, Jan and I do. But uh, we are, are competing against each other a little bit now and then. But she always beats me out because she puts flowers in and they are beautiful. All right, uh, I'll turn this over to Bonnie Swenson and she can tell a little bit about what she plants. And then I'll turn it back to the Damhoffs and they can uh, show some of the more unique features that they have, especially with tomatoes and uh, maybe a little bit difference on the size of some of the plants that they have. Um, I, I do have a lot of flowers in here, a lot of annuals um, that I absolutely love. Um, this is Lysianthus, um, which is my, f my most favorite of the annuals. Um, it gets like paper roses on it, and the flowers will last in a vase for up to two weeks. So um, that's what all of the those are. I also have um, zinnias in here, um, and that actually helps with, with the pollinators. The pollinators um, like that, the bees. And, and um, back here, I have calendula, which is actually an herb. And um, the hoverflies um, like, like it, and the hoverflies eat aphids and thrifts, which we have gladiolas in here, and um, gladiolas are known to get thrifts. Um, the beans are starting to actually get some beans on there. Now I haven't picked them yet, but you can see that they're almost ready to pick. They're pretty thin, but they are, they're loaded. Um, I also have some herbs in here. I have parsley and basil, and I belong to the Prairie um, Society Herb Group. And the herb that we're learning about this year is the anise hyssop. So I have one that's a transplant from Marine Pearson, and then this one was started from seed. And um, that's also a really good pollinator. The bees like that too, so. Bonnie sells her plants and herbs at the er, and her fruits and vegetables at the master er, at the um, the farmers market both on Wednesday afternoons and to be coming on Saturday af or Saturday mornings at the Y and so um, maybe Bonnie you could tell a little bit about the kinds of things that you bring to the market. Um, I usually just bring stuff that I have left over. I, um, I usually can a lot of it, so a lot of it is 
Um, I make a corn salsa and um, some different some different things that I can. Um, I'll be canning some pickled green beans this year and um, some pickled beets. And um, yeah, so and if there's anything that's left over that we don't eat or use, then then I'll bring it. But like the lisianthus, I I like to put those in. I do the tables at our church, and I like to put those out for that. So. In the background, just to point this out, uh, we have some raspberry and strawberry plants, but they're be actually behind our camera. Man, Rudy. There's also grapevines and a couple of cherry trees. So um, those are pretty unique. The cherry trees are dwarf plants, and the grapevines. Um, there's enough, I'm sure, so that there can be a harvest on those. But all of those uh, can be put in a large hoop garden like this. And so, um, and again, in the background, you can see some gladiolas. But um, the thing that's quite unique over um, on my side to the right, uh, we have some large potatoes, which are getting uh, probably, at this point, the plants are large, the potatoes are small. And um, the Damhoff family has built some particularly interesting supports for their tomatoes. This tomato cage right here is uh, built out of PVC and I was concerned about cost so uh, I kept track of what this cost to put together and this one here, the wood one, was actually just as cheap so we went with the wood one which will take care of about 12 tomatoes and I uh, just drop strings down and I use pipe cleaners or something that resembles pipe cleaners to uh, tie the tomatoes up as they grow so when they get ready, we just walk right straight in and uh, we don't have to get on the ground and harvest tomatoes. Uh, there's quite a variety of tomatoes. This one right here is a heirloom, a brandy wine red. And then uh, we also have a yellow ch uh, pear tomato. And then this will be um, a little red cherry tomato. And uh, we like to just eat them just the way they are come right out pick one and uh, they're very juicy and tasty or we can make uh, tomato juice or salsa uh, and if we have extra then Bonnie can help us out or we uh, uh, sell them or give them to our neighbors uh, I think you notice the potatoes uh, one thing that stands out to me is the deep rich green color and uh, pretty good sized leaves on some of them then a few of the other things we have uh, are beets, table beets, and uh, she'll pickle them, can them, freeze them, eat them fresh, uh, and some people even eat the leaves. Um, but uh, they are suffering a little bit from the heat. And the same way with the strawberries this year, um, it got uh, over 110 degrees, and the strawberries that I have in now don't take the heat very well, so we're hurting there. But uh, there's cabbage, there's uh, broccoli, kohlrabi, spinach, Swiss chard, onions, carrots, and we have the full-size carrots. The kids like to come out and uh, clean them off and eat them right away. And then uh, beans, green beans. And uh, they're very good fresh. And uh, Bonnie's been known to, after she harvests the beets, put in another batch of beets. So she's harvested up to three different uh, batches of beets in a year. And you can do that with lettuces and different things. But um, being a dairy farmer, I get tired. And when fall comes, I just shut the doors and don't look at it. But Bonnie has been known to keep things going and uh, does a super job. Well, do any of you want to add anything more? I'm just so impressed. Here it is, the first part of June, and um, we are looking at a garden that normally probably looks like this in July or August, uh, Some, especially the tomato plants that are getting quite large. So I'm very impressed by this. Any other questions or anything you want to add? Um, one, 
One thing I was going to add is that um, there's so many benefits to plant in here. Um, we have control of the water um, with the soaker hoses, and so we can control how much water the plants are getting, and especially for the tomatoes, and being the tomatoes are up um, and not laying on the ground, we have very little um, diseases on the tomatoes. Um, another thing is, is that it did get hot in here when the weather got so hot, and my beets, they bolted. They went right to seed, so I didn't get any beets, but I, trans I um, planted right away, pulled them up, and I planted um, some dill and some um, kohlrabi in that row, and they're ready up. So It's very amazing. So you can see what now you have to work with as gardeners. Um, I can see what I have to work with with my tomatoes, but uh, we um, join together here before we say goodbye for the day. Uh, the Damhoff Farm is uh, south of Wilmer. It's about a mile south of the Savea School. There's a sign on the outside on the highway that says Shrimp Farm. So uh, this is just part of the Shrimp Farm. But it's an interesting uh, way to look at a garden, too, in case you're interested. Give the Damhoffs a call. Let them know you might be curious about this. And to the rest of you, happy gardening. <laughs>